Parliament rejects the opposition's bid for a no-confidence vote. The majority of MPs vote to retain Peter O'Neill as Prime Minister. Will Guinea lines up in the Rugby World Cup Grand Final? This is National MTV News with Tokana Hasavi. Good evening and welcome to Thursday's news. The motion on the vote of no confidence filed by the opposition has been rejected in Parliament. Acting Speaker Ida Ganassi informed Parliament that the motion was defective. He has returned the motion to the opposition to rectify the defects. Mr. Ganassi told Parliament this morning he received notice of the motion of no confidence filed by the opposition at 1 p.m. yesterday. Dr. Alan Marat, anticipating what was to come, tried to intervene to guide the acting speaker not to proceed further with the announcement, but his attempts were not entertained. The speaker then announced that the motion, though of national importance, had been rejected. Honorable members, after careful consideration of the document given by Honorable uh, Sam Basil, the chair decided the motion was a matter of national importance, but found that the motion itself was defective, both in form and substance. <clears throat> the chair noted the motion that are of national importance should be reported to the national parliament and proper procedures and forms should be used when attempting to do so. The chair is satisfied. The document containing the notice and the motion of no confidence is defective and therefore it was rejected. Several members of the opposition in Vanimo Green MP Belden Nama, Rabaul Open MP Dr. Alan Marat, Bulolo MP Sam Basil and Laga Pogera MP Nixon Mangape walked out in protest of the announcement. Norton Governor Gary Jufa and Guelala MP William Samb were the only ones that remained. Drift are now changing with better road network. Continue. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker. A vote of confidence for the Prime Minister was later held following a motion moved by the leader of government business, James Marape. The vote was in favor of the Prime Minister, 78 votes to two votes. 78. The nose. Two. <laughs> Honorable members, this parliament has confidence in the Prime Minister. Yeah. Opposition leader Don Polier says they have accepted the written of the motion but will resubmit once their legal team assess the reasons of its rejection. Uh, and uh, our lawyers, uh, our legal team, uh, the leaders uh, will uh, look at and assess the reasons that are contained uh, in the letter given to us by the Speaker and we will address it. Uh, but the point I'd like to make is that we, uh, we will not give up. We will continue to file the motion of vote of no confidence on the Prime Minister Peter Oni. Uh, we will do that again and again. Uh, we will immediately uh, move the motion again uh, tomorrow or next week. We'll do it. Mickey Cavera, National MTV News. Well, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill thanked his fellow members of Parliament for the confidence shown in his leadership. The government's faction showed a solid front this afternoon at a media conference following the vote of confidence in Parliament. Mr O'Neill stressed that political stability was important and that the government was more focused on delivering a responsible budget as well as addressing the El Nino situation in the country. Speaking after the vote of confidence, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill thanked his parliamentary colleagues for their commitment to the government and to ongoing political stability in the country. I want to uh, express my appreciation of the confidence that the coalition has in our, in our government, uh, and especially uh, their confidence in myself, uh, to lead our government into uh, 2017. 
The Prime Minister said the government had a good track record in delivering to the people and said there was no room for games or distractions from policy debates. Uh, we in government gave the opposition an opportunity to uh, present their numbers uh, to a vote of confidence that was expressed on the floor of parliament. But as you can see, the opposition failed miserably to even produce any numbers whatsoever. Mr. O'Neill said the nation was facing serious challenges from drought and low global commodity prices. He called for all leaders to focus on the welfare of the people. He said when Parliament resumed next Tuesday, the government will present the 2016 budget. I hope that the good opposition leader and his team focus on a good budget reply rather than wasting everybody else's time. They could not prove their numbers on the floor today. Coalition partners reaffirmed their alliance with the ruling People's National Congress Party. As leader of National Alliance, reaffirming and confirming National Alliance support to uh, the Prime Minister and uh, the government led by PNC. The policy directions that the government under the leadership of the Prime Minister has taken in partnership with our pa partners is the only way forward for the government and for the country. We have promised to remain with it. People's name is longer than until 2017. We remain committed to the government of the Mr. O'Neill said it was clear that the government will now go to the 2017 election as the government that made commitments and a government that delivered. Deli Waigeno, National MTV News. Well, members of the opposition have described the vote of confidence for the Prime Minister as uncalled for. They say it does not comply with the standing orders of Parliament. Dr. Alan Marat says the Clerk of Parliament is entitled to make the announcement on the motion of vote of no confidence and not the acting speaker. While Northern Governor Gary Chufa says the reasons outlined by the leader of government business for the motion of vote of no confidence was not in the best interest of the people. So it is brought before the speaker. It is submitted to the speaker. That's what the standing orders are saying. It's brought to the, the, the speaker or in the current uh, situation, the deputy speaker. He then takes it to the private business committee. And he takes it to the private business committee only on Wednesdays. And that's what he did yesterday. Now, should there be no quorum before 1.45 p.m. on a Wednesday, then the standing orders allows the deputy speaker in the current uh, situation or the speaker to make the decision whether the notice of motion is either and only to either of a parochial nature or secondly whether it is of a matter of national importance now in this letter this letter he confirmed he declared that the notice of motion is a matter of national importance Then he contradicts himself at the end by rejecting it. If you had this vote of confidence outside the parliament, the results would be significantly different. Significantly different. Even if today you had asked the gallery to vote, I guarantee you that they would not have voted for you. I see, Mr. Speaker, that you shouldn't be doing what you should have done today to inform parliament. It is the role of the clerk. You should have just allowed this motion to come back to the mover and we fixed the anomalies. Government's House has revealed that Governor General Sir Michael Ogio is recovering from heart surgery. The PNG head of state recently underwent a bypass heart surgery at the Raffles Hospital in Singapore. Official Secretary Tipo Vuatha, who accompanied the Governor General, reported that the surgery went well and that Sir Michael Ogio's condition is stable. The Governor-General is being kept under close medical observation and is expected to make a full recovery and will return to the country next month. In his absence, Speaker of the National Parliament, Theo Zirinuo, is acting Governor-General. We'll have the day's other top stories after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. 
Well, two men are injured with knife and spear wounds while 24 houses were torched to the ground following a clash at Lays Boundary Road on Saturday. The fight began two weeks ago between the community at Boundary Road and the members of the Sialum community, which resulted in several houses being destroyed. The names of the 17 suspects have been handed over to police. According to the outgoing lay metropolitan commander Haven Lakatani, ethnic and other alcohol-related clashes have decreased. Officer in charge of community policing, Sergeant Alois Kabua, says not all settlements have the problem of alcohol-related incidents. Otherwise, uh, we are still working on it. Even the women power, we have uh, less men power in the community policy section. Nelly Yugamu, a resident at Sialum compound, says families aren't safe when houses have been burned down. Early in the morning, six o'clock, people are stop, people are looking spear and a stone flying on the house, people are thinking of life. People are picking in a merry, people are kissing more, people are sun up, now, all talking, people must move out now, people are cooking house. Because the Law and Order Peace Committee at Boundary Road have written a statement to police requesting presence at Sialum settlement, notorious for petty crimes fueled by alcohol. Mata Luis, National MTV News, Lay. The only rural airstrip on Morabe's remote CRC Island has opened after 20 years. Love Love Airstrip allows people a travel time to CRC in 45 minutes by small aircraft, an expensive alternative to sea transport. CRC Lutheran High School students were mobilized by the local level government to clean the airstrip. MTV's Bethany Harriman reports from Lane. A small aircraft will be able to fly passengers who can afford the fare to CRC's Lab Lab Airport after almost 20 years. For those who can afford it, it will take them 45 minutes to reach CRC. On sea, it will take at least a night, depending on weather. Yesterday, a community and a school celebrated the opening of the airstrip. Students at the CRC Lutheran High School were heavily involved in the cleanup and setting up of the airstrip. North Coast Aviation aircrafts will be flying into the area. The company's owner was at the opening yesterday. Airstrip now, I mean, me play reopen and declare him operational now so from next week onwards I'm uh, lab lab airstrip by you got regular air service one kind the lab lab airstrip reopening comes as a relief to health workers and teachers who live on the island for them it means safer traveling between lay and siasi when lutheran shipping got liquidated people had to spend more money on fuel and make crossings on dinghies on open sea the administration of Morobe's maritime districts have ensured the return of more affordable sea travel. Passenger vessels like the Giamsau and the Lady Zeming are now operating under Morobe Shipping Services. Bethany Hariman, National MTV News, Lay. An MOU signed between the police commissioner as chairman of the Security Industry Association and three security firms to train security guards has raised issues with nationally owned security companies. Six months ago, these companies wrote a letter protesting the arrangement to police commissioner saying the MOU is unethical. MTV Sarah Alpon reports. They say the MOU is between the Security Industry Association, of which the police commissioner is chairman, and three security companies which they claim are foreign-owned. The interim panel leading this opposition against the MOU advised the gathering that while the police commissioner's office didn't receive the letter as yet, copies have been received by the office of the prime minister and the police minister. One of their main issues is the training arrangement that is being offered in the MOU. We don't want any other security company to train us. We want an independent body to, to train us. And it must be in consultation with National Training Council and Security Industry Authority. The group that met today is made up of some owners and executive managers of nationally owned security companies. This is the fourth time they have met as a group. Their collective concern is to protect their industry. 
Amos Daniels owns SAC Assets Protective Services. He said the Security Industry Association has not done enough for the nationally owned companies. Out of our pocket, we organize these uh, companies and we are giving employment to Papua New Guineans. So we think that the government should recognize us, give us some support. As one of the interim panel members, Mr. Kaupa said there is a strong desire among his colleagues to form an association to better represent their concerns in the industry. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. The national government is committed to develop Banimore Town in the coming years. This was announced yesterday in Parliament by State Enterprise Minister Ben Micah. Minister Micah was responding to questions raised by re-elected Sundown Governor Ahmad Mai on the development of vital services like the supply of electricity and water in Vanimore Town. Mr Micah assured the Sundown Governor that plans for sourcing electricity at Indonesia's Jayapura city will be finalised. In Parliament yesterday, the re-elected Sundown Governor Amkat Mai asked a series of questions to State Enterprise Minister Ben Micah on the update of major electricity and water projects in Vanimo. Now my question is, when, are we, when will PNG Power uh, put up the power poles that are now sitting in Vanimo uh, that need to be brought to the border so that we get connected with the power from uh, Jayapura? The governor also raised concerns on the water and sewage system of Vanimo town. We have a population of about 20,000 people and we have a high demand for water. The move to source electricity from Jayapura came after a visit to Indonesia. Minister Micah, who led the delegation to Jakarta in 2013, said an agreement was made between an Indonesian state-owned electricity company and PNG Power, who Mr. Micah represented. However, the deal was not complete because of internal issues with PNG Power. The minister maintained that Indonesia is keen on partnering with PNG to complete this project. And once this project is complete, electricity will be supplied throughout the west and east coast of Vanimo, including inland areas. Uh, our friends on the other side of the border, uh, on the border, only moving Penis power line, long only me come long display market, uh, butters market. We're only ready to connect. Now, good luck question blow you. At the moment, I have not uh, really received a report from PNG Power because online side blow you me, only will sit down, wait him, uh, conclude him this power purchase agreement. Minister Micah gave his assurance to the Sundown Governor, saying they will revisit Indonesia to complete the deal. I want to assure you that after our visit and concluding the agreement, we will immediately uh, begin the process of uh, putting up the poles and in the not too distant future by you me uh, connecting this power I come inside Long Vanimo. It's uh, something that has already been agreed and it's long overdue for us to connect. A feasibility study is currently underway also for a proper water and sanitation system for Vanimo Town. Uh, once it is done, uh, Vanimo Town will be declared as a water district, water and sanitation district and then we will begin the process of uh, upgrading uh, the water and sanitation system in Vanimo Town. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Stanley Ovet Jr., National MTV News. And now let's take a look at the finance news. The Kina closed 15 points lower at 0.3425 US dollars in the interbank market today. At Bank South Pacific, our Kina was trading at 0.3350 US dollars, 0.4682 Australian dollars. 0.3030 euro and 40.23 Japanese yen. Taking a look at commodity prices at New York close, gold, coffee and cocoa close the day higher, while copper close the day lower. Palm oil close lower as well, while crude oil and copper close the day higher. And finally, on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 198 points higher, the ASX closed at 9 points higher as well, and the All Ordinary is closed at 10 points higher. Stay tuned, you're watching National MTV News tonight. We'll be back with more local stories after these short messages. Thanks for your company and welcome back to the news. 
The health department has conducted its first ever vaccine preventable disease surveillance training workshop with the World Health Organization. The workshop is aimed at training workers to treat patients who contracted diseases from outbreaks and to improve disease surveillance. The health department conducted the workshop to train health workers on how to treat disease patients and to report outbreaks or unusual diseases in their provinces. The workers at the provincial teams will then take samples to test the labs certified by the World Health Organization. With this data, the health workers can respond to the affected areas. It's only by surveillance we try to do, uh, detect the cases and it's also only by surveillance we will uh, ensure that uh, we have not seen any one case. Our community leaders to support those health teams that are going into the villages, the schools to vaccinate our children. The program coordinator, Edelson Yalo, says the most important thing is disease prevention. This is the first ever coordinated by the health department. They will carry out similar trainings in Mamase, Highlands and the New Guinea Islands. I just want to make a public plea for every, every, every citizen of this country to ensure that if they have a child next to them, they should check to see that the child has been immunized. Immunization is free at all clinics in Papua New Guinea. Marilyn Diakatam, National MTV News. A 73-year-old German sailor was rescued yesterday afternoon in the waters of Gulf Province after drifting at sea. He was rescued by Gobe Freight Service, a tracking company, and brought to Port Moresby this morning. Sailor Moritz Herman started a one-man journey in 2010 to sail around the world. MTV's Melissa Govira reports. Herman's plan was to sail around the world. He started his journey from Germany in Europe to Africa, the Caribbean and Venezuela in South America and then to the Pacific. Upon his journey to the Cook Islands, the rough seas drifted his boat to a small island called Hitotaki. He stayed there for a year before he repaired his boat in Vanuatu in 2014 and intended to set sail to Thursday Island. However, he went off course. Coming to PNG was not his plan but the boat steering wheel got locked and he drifted again to sea. The rough seas pushed him into PNG waters. Um, I have had um, some big problems uh, before, but always I could solve it. I was more s stronger and uh, uh, that uh, sea washed me over, over the deck. It, that was never happened to me. I always had a fast grip, but in this time uh, I was uh, destroyed. A week ago, he was rescued by steamships company and brought to Port Moresby. He repaired his boat and continued his journey. However, he got stuck again somewhere in Gulf Province. This time, vessel GFS Marine 02 detected his location while he was making a distress call. GFS received a call from National Maritime Service Authority to rescue the yacht. And, and uh, requested assistance that the uh, yacht had, uh, was in distress. Um, quite a ways out, about I think about 80 miles out at that stage or 90 miles out. Um, and uh, they, each of our vessels here, all the coastal sh uh, shipping vessels, have a, a long-range tracking device. So that enables RCC and Canberra, and also with, with PNG RCC, is to decide where, which is the closest vessel to, to uh, give assistance. Herman was hit in the head a few days ago when the strong wind blew his boat. This has made him sick and lost his appetite. The boat is at Yacht Club and he's receiving medical assistance there. Herman also has a son who is a sailor like his father and he's attempting to make records. Herman, now 73, started sailing around the world when he was 20 years old. Melissa Govira, National MTV News. Well, developing partnerships has been recognized as a leading factor in improving healthcare in Papua New Guinea. This was the message to the people of Hela Province when its main hospital, Tari General Hospital, received much-needed medical equipment this week. The donation to the hospital was a result of businesses, NGOs and the government working together. The delivery of health services in many parts of Papua New Guinea remain unsatisfactory. This despite the country boasting uninterrupted economic growth over the last decade. 
and for one of the country's newest provinces, Hela, and its capital, Tari, providing health remains a difficult task. On the old cases, the workload report here, 15 to 12 to 15,000 trauma cases uh, every month. I mean, me know some plenty money, workload in Bagarab, you mean. Uh, you may this stuff, so you need to bring him this love figure come down because MSF we go and now by our doctors, by black see me come by who said, by look at him, you may and most of them now we will hurry up to look see more doctors, he come and make him stop. But there are organizations that are willing to help improve the standard of health care. One such organization, PNG Tribal Foundation. This week, the foundation was in Hela province to deliver much needed equipment to Tari Hospital equipment that will help make the work of hospital staff a little easier. Thank you, Lord, this day. Thank you, Lord, you all get to come. Now, me how much true, all medical supplies come. The equipment were brought in from the United States following a visit to the U.S. earlier this year by Linda Babau O'Neill, wife of Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. She had made a presentation to business executives in Denver, Colorado, whilst raising funds for PNG Tribal Foundation. Me like thank, thank you, thank you, Lord Dr. Jackson, for giving me opportunity. I'm going to stand up and talk about my nice man Mary, Lord Colorado. Man Mary got heart, Lord old man, Lord world. All got heart, Lord old man who got problem. Kiss him some flowers. Pro, he got viroa. All by staff, Lord old man. So all me this. Also present were representatives from Project Cure, a leading NGO from the United States, which played a crucial role in providing the equipment and delivering them to PNG. We just walked through the hospital, and I met a lot of nurses and doctors that are working at this hospital, and they're dedicated to keep this community healthy. That's why this container is here, is to help give them the tools to make sure that this community stays healthy. The team from PNG Tribal Foundation and Project Cure also traveled to Mendi, Southern Highlands Province, to carry out an assessment at the Mendi General Hospital to identify what medical equipment the hospital needed. This, according to PNG Tribal Foundation President Gary Bustin, is how their partnership looks to help improve the standard of care in PNG. First Lady and with Exxon support and with Project Cure and Tribal Foundation coming together with Mapai Transport as well as uh, Lay Rotary and Ryback Stevedores. Uh, we delivered uh, about a million kina in medical supplies. Uh, so we call it the Tribal Foundation because we work together as a tribe. The visit by officials from PNG Tribal Foundation and Project Cure is aimed at improving health and service delivery within Hela and Southern Highlands provinces. Merbotulo, National MTV News. Well, we have True Guy Sports, that's coming up next, and a preview of the grand final clash between the Wallabies and the All Blacks in the Rugby World Cup. That story and more coming up after this break. True Guy Sports. Thanks for joining me with True Guy Sports as the days count down till the showdown of the 2015 Rugby World Cup on Sunday morning PNG time. The one question that the entire world of rugby is asking is whether or not New Zealand can be the first country to win the cup back to back. While Australia has been phenomenal, phenomenal throughout the competition, New Zealand has kept their preparations under the radar. Key matchups to look out for will be Richie McCaw and David Pocock in the forwards. And, and Adam Ashley Cooper and Julian Savea in the back line. Like it or not, the All Blacks are world champions and this weekend they have been tipped as the favourites to win the cup. Should they win, they will become the first nation to win it back to back. But there is a slight twist. The All Blacks have never beaten Australia at Twickenham nor have they won a World Cup on England rugby's home turf. The, the lessons that we've learned in Sydney and Eden Park, well, I guess we've already applied into our game and, and put them in, into practice, they're, they're the same. And, you know, it's a great rivalry. 
and uh, you know clearly we, we play each other a few times but it's pretty special to play in a, in a World Cup final against them. All Blacks assistant coach Ian Foster also commented on what will be the matchup of the World Cup between David Pocock and Richie McCaw. Reaffirms they got some good players that's why they're in the final and you know they've got some areas of strength that they'll try to attack us we've got some areas of strength we want to attack them so um, you know quite frankly it's if we go through the same process we go through every time we play an opponent is now you analyze all their players and where the opportunities are and where the threats are and make sure we prepare accordingly and that's what we're trying to do but Pocock himself is just grateful for a World Cup grand final appearance. Personally, a, a, you know, a great few years of, of uh, learning and working hard to get to this point. So I wouldn't, you know, there's, there's not another group that I'd rather uh, be working alongside. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. And the same emotion shown by Wallabies halfback Will Genya, who had grown up watching Stephen Larkin without knowing he'd one day be in his shoes. So the most amazing thing about it was just how. You know, how the whole country rallied behind the Wallabies and how, uh, how proud you know, we all were of the team and, and what they were doing at that stage. So, um, yeah, that, they're definitely my, my fond memories of that, uh, of that final. Both Genia and Pocock were instrumental in the Wallabies' fight against Argentina last week. And while bruised and battered, both are looking forward to a physical match come this weekend at Twickenham. Lorraine Genia, National MTV Sports. The build-up of Sevens Rugby continues as Madang prepares to host the inaugural Kalibobo Sevens next month. Madang, which has had a strong contingent over the years, will be preparing to stamp their mark in the rugby community once again. Teams that participated in the National Provincial Sevens Championships and Amayu Sevens here in Port Moresby are expected to feature in the upcoming Sevens Festival in Madang. The competition is set for kickoff on the 14th of November with finals expected to be held the day after. Well, Papua New Guinea will be sending 2050 National Soccer League winners, Lay City Dwellers and minor premiers, Hekari United, to compete in the OFC Champions League in New Zealand. It will be held from the 9th to the 23rd of April 2016, with matches to be played in Auckland and Wellington. For Papua New Guinea and New Caledonia, it will be the first time they have had two teams competing. The tournament will see three groups of four teams playing in a league system with a winner of each group and the best runner-up qualify for the semi-finals. The eventual winner will represent OFC at the 2016 FIFA Club World Cup. Teams will be sent from Fiji, New Caledonia and Papua New Guinea with Auckland FC to return as defending champions. This is the one through ball praise to Luis Corrales, tries to play a cross in off the unfortunate and Gary. The finals will be held on the 23rd of April in Auckland. In January next year, club championships will be held in Cook Islands with Samoa, Tonga, American Samoa and Cook Islands, all vying for the last remaining sport in the Champions League. Elijah Lavette, National MTV Sports. The 2014 champions, Lay City Dwellers, are gearing up for another Telecom National Soccer League season. Yesterday, after their training session, Morabe Governor Kelly Naru visited the team to show his support for this season. The provincial government has paid for the club's registration fee. The Lay City Dwellers management, coaching staff and technical support team are starting 2015 with great expectations. Last year, they snatched victory from Medang FC at the grand final. Their preparations now is geared towards achieving the same results. Late yesterday afternoon, they had a visit from the Morobe governor, Kelly Naru, who brought good news for the club. Thank you, Long Club. Long Yupla, looks away long. This la. Uh, mutual relationship me, long support me go come. The provincial government is paying for the Lay City Dwellers Telecom National Soccer League 60,000 kina registration fee. The Lay City Dwellers story is both unique and special. When the Lay City Dwellers came into the National Soccer League last year, it was a newcomer. But then during the season, it had a phenomenal year and went on to win the grand final. This year, they're looking for the same result. 
But the difference is they have more support from the Morbe provincial government. Bethany Harriman, National MTV Sports, Lay. Well, True Guy Sports continues after this break and the NRL Premiership Shield arrives here in Port Moresby. I'll be back with the details. Stay with us. Two Kai Sports. Good to have you back with True Kai Sports. The PNG Olympic Committee has announced that the majority of athletes who competed in the Pacific Games have been paid their incentives. Athletes were paid 20,000 kina for gold medals, 10,000 kina for silver, and 5,000 kina for bronze medal winners. Athletes who competed but did not win medals were also given 2,000 kina. The government says the incentives have been rewarded to athletes for their sacrifice and success and an opportunity to pursue their personal goals. Well, three North Queensland Cowboys representatives arrived with the 2015 Premiership Shield this afternoon and will be here in Port Moresby for the weekend. Over the next few days, they will take the 2015 NRL Premiership Shield to various locations around the nation's capital. The NRL Premiership Shield won by the North Queensland Cowboys in this year's 2015 NRL season has landed in Port Moresby. The Shield arrived today along with three North Queensland Cowboys representatives. Unfortunately, current Cowboys were unable to make the trip but the Premiership Shield was brought in by former Cowboy and Australian representative Brent Tate. Go to guys. <laughs> General Manager Commercial Stephen Mitchell and Senior Sales and Development Manager Jeffrey Rebel. This weekend we'll see the prestigious NRL Premiership Trophy travel in the nation's capital where the general public will have the opportunity to catch a glimpse of such a prestigious trophy. Dion Kombang, National MTV Sports. Well, PNG Swimming President Elizabeth Wells is looking at hosting a national swimming tournament for both national and international swimmers to be held here in Port Moresby. This tournament will be used to select elite swimmers to Rio de Janeiro next year to represent PNG at the 2016 Olympic Games. MTV's Godwin Eke reports. Having world-class facilities, the Papua New Guinea Swimming Association is hoping to hold a national swimming tournament using FINA standards where both our national and international swimmers can compete in order to identify top swimmers to be part of the 2016 Rio de Janeiro Olympic Games. Papua New Guinea Swimming President Elizabeth Wells said with the Rio Olympics on the way next year, she had pointed out some of the familiar names that could be attending the Rio Olympics to represent PNG in swimming after the recent successful Pacific Games. Yes, we've got three. Uh, we've got Ryan Penny, who's already qualified. We've got Sam Sagers, who's close to qualifying. We have two girls at the moment, um, Barbara Skelton and Tegan McCarthy who attended the FINA Worlds and that was part of the eligibility. But we also have a group of swimmers, Ryan Maskelin, um, Savannah Chichenko, Annalisa Mopio-Jane, that are coming through the ranks that could qualify. She said training won't be easy for the swimmers living here and overseas as they still have other national and international events to attend in order to qualify for the Olympic Games next year. So we've, we've got a a, a, an elite level that we're bringing through um, and, there, and then we have this group, the next group will be attending the Oceana Swimming Championships next year in June and we'll have our Theatres National Championships in April which we're trying to, um, we've asked FINA if that can be a FINA qualifying meet and if, if they say yes we'll be inviting clubs, our mentor clubs from overseas to come and be part of it, yeah. Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports. And that report wraps up True Guy Sports tonight. The weather details when we come back. Stay with us. True Guy Sports. <laughs> True Guy Sports.
Taking a look at the weather forecast for the next 24 hours in southern region, cloudy weather with chances of light showers expected in Port Moresby, fine and dry expected in Daru, Alata and Popandeta, while Kerama to look forward to cloudy weather. In Mamase, brief showers expected in Lay City, Madang, Wewak and Banimore to look forward to mostly fine weather. In the New Guinea Islands, relatively fine weather expected in all centres. And in the Islands region, all centres to look forward to cloudy weather with chances of light showers. And now let's take a look at forecasts for small ships. But first, there is a strong wind warning current for south southeast winds of 20 to 34 knots are expected to continue for the next 24 hours causing rough seas. There is a note to all small crafts and boat, boats. They are advised to take necessary precautions before going out to seas. Now let's take a look at waters of southern PNG, Indonesian border through Torres Strait, Garo to Kiwai Island, Karama to Yule Island through to Hood Point, to Samurai Island with waters of Cape Vogel to Finchhafen, and waters of Eastern and Western Malibu Islands, seas of 2 metres to 2.5 metres. And now let's check out ocean forecasts for PNG areas. Coral Sea sees rather rough with southeast winds at 20 to 25 knots with gusts. Solomon Sea sees moderate to rather rough with southeast winds at 15 to 25 knots. Bismarck Sea sees moderate with southeast winds at, at 15 to 25 knots with gusts. And lastly, Pacific Ocean Sea slight with clockwise winds at 10 to 15 knots. And now recapping our top stories for tonight before we go. Parliament rejects the opposition's bid for a no-confidence vote. Also, majority of MPs vote to retain Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. And Will Genia lines up in the Rugby World Cup Grand Final. Well, that's the way it is this Thursday, the 29th of October 2015. From all of us here, I'm Tokana Asami Jr. You take care and stay happy. Good night.